I played I played Chaos Legion. You played huh? Chaos Legion? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, you're, you're, why? <laughs> it looked cool. It's I was so like shit. It was shit. Yeah, yeah. So I also played the bouncer, and that was shit too. Oh, I've got, I've got, a li- I've got a little bit of a soft spot for the bouncer because it gave me so much fucking jokes. The story in that game is fucking they- what? <laughs> what? They is were both. Going on? They were both extremely shit Square games in the early PS2 days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is Chaos Legion oh, Square? On. No, it's it might Capcom. be Capcom, Capcom but it looked like, sure. it. Looked like sure. it. <laughs> <laughs> I own both of those games on my PS2. Yeah, so did I. They were rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Taste my game fix. Hello and welcome back. This is the uh, second part of our 16th episode of Taste My Game Face. I'm Zizi Adiemo, and in case you missed it before, I am joined by Joe Knight. Yo. Alan Heath. Hello. Liz Richardson. Hello. And Daniel Slauson. Hello. So, in this half, we're not going to talk about news like the first half. We're going to get stuck into what we've actually been playing, the games that we've got our filthy mitts on. Um, and the one that, like, I'd been kind of eyeing up for a little while but hadn't picked up but um now finally have is the Talos principle um which has been pretty fun um does does, any, does everybody know about Talos principle yeah has anybody else exists. played it <laughs> not played it I haven't played it yet okay it's good it's, it's good. the metal hat can uh, the, the metal hand cat game yes the metal <laughs> hand <laughs> cat game sure um it's it's um a first person puzzler like you know, in the vein of the yeah, portals and whatnot. Um, but it's kind of the way it tells its story is quite different. And the puzzles are about, um, moving different tools around, um, that kind of interact with, I don't know, mines and, and force fields and laser beams in different ways. Um, yeah. You which is pretty cool. Point. Um, it's, it's got like a good progression in the puzzles. They, they all, involve thinking about things in slightly new and interesting ways. I think it it drops the ball a little bit there. There are a couple of puzzles that I've done that are d- too similar for me to really feel like I'm mastering like the new new weird techniques of of getting my head around them. But um yeah, like it's got good music. It's got like a nice atmosphere. Oh, it's got an interesting so world. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. missing a key point though. What's the key point I'm missing? You're an android. Speaking uh, to God. <laughs> I was ex- I was explaining the, the, the point of gameplay. I, I was going to get on to the story afterwards. I know, but that's the bit I'm excited about. <laughs> I, I, no, it's cool. It's pretty cool. I like the, the whole kind of flex of it is that it's um, exploring the um, philosophical understanding of AI and, and like um, human agency and humanity and all that kind of stuff, like through this, yeah kind of conversation that you're possibly having with god or your creator or something (laughs) and you're 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 gleaning more bits of information by interacting with computer terminals that are scattered throughout Mm. the world where you're being kind of fed the story of possibly your creation or like Mm. the archiving of all human knowledge or something like that i mean i know more but i don't want to give it away um no it's (laughs) It's it's really really good. It's really really good for for that alone. But the, but the puzzling is an extra uh, excellent element yeah. on top of that. It's got two really good intellectual levels that I like, and one is the puzzles, and one is the story, the philosophy, and all of that, and having them combined. It was uh, I really liked um, in the Assassin's Creed series in the second game in particular. Um, mm-hmm. There was. You know, you had the game, it was good, but then there were the little puzzles you could find, the glyphs. And then when you yeah, when yeah. you unlocked them, it was like a, a really good secret and it, it had added so much more depth. And I think that what, what I watched uh, Day 9 play the Talos Principle and watching it gave me that same feeling of like, there's something really big here and I want to find Unearth out all it. of the... Yeah, and it's it's very rare you get a Piece game like that. Together. It's, yeah, it's really It's really good... Uh, like it's really well written 
actually is a is a strong point like the you're kind of you're kind of getting different bits of fiction from various different sources and each of them feel like they they've got uh their own author and their own personality and mm. the the writing is is clever like it, there are there are kind of bits of, of the philosophy that are scattered throughout it that aren't kind of dumbed down to be interpretable to anyone if you don't understand it if you don't yeah. know a word or something that like i have in a couple in a couple of occasions like you can <laughs> you end up going and finding out what the hell it's on about which is yeah. quite nice um but and also it's, that- it's not it's not required either like it, it yeah. you can kind of you've got enough outside of the kind of the specific details of each little bit of text that you're given to be able to build up an image of what's going on beyond that there's one particular puzzle i'm thinking of right now and i want to ask you later if you if you found the answer to it but um I don't want to spoil it for anyone, so. <laughs> um, oh, okay. But um, isn't that, I think there's uh, you know, you've got the QR code sort of scattered around the maps, um, mm-hmm. and some of them, I get the feel they're they're input by other users, aren't they? Who other people have played the game? I I don't know if that's true, but reading them, you get the real feeling that that's the case. It, yeah, it, it has. The, yeah, the, the, the world, you feel, you feel quite alone in the world in one sense, but you also feel like other people have been there. Connected. Other, en- yeah. other entities are a part of it, which is, which is quite nice. Like, there's, yeah, I don't know, I think I've said it. Like, there's, there's yeah. a, a feeling of loneliness, but also, like, not a feeling of, of pure separation. Um, it's almost, so, also, almost like, um, uh, not a memorable thing, like, you don't remember being there before, but you get the feeling it's a path that's been walked several times. So, yes, exactly. Like, almost like a pilgrimage. Precisely. And so and you like, get that. And a nice, yeah. and a nice thing is like that that QR code stuff. Like you get mm. to put your own up as well and decide what they say. Yeah, that that does happen, through. doesn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a very but interesting like, game. But like those those bits of mechanics are kind of a, a drip fed to you. You keep getting an extra little piece of the puzzle that comes in a in a slightly new form that like you, you start it's off crack. you start off getting those bits of text from terminals and then you start picking up audio files and then you start seeing things in the environment and hopefully there's more after that like i i, I don't know i've I played it for uh, like a fair chunk but i know there's a hell of a lot of the game left so i'm yeah. expecting there to be more twists and turns along the path it's cool. You're, it's really cool. You're guided by two entities aren't you? well you're guided by uh what's the god's name um, um, Elum or something like that. Elum, Alan, um, Alan, <laughs> Alan the God. Is it you, Alan? Alan. <laughs> is it, is yeah, it just me. you? It is. <laughs> it's me all um, along. Yeah, uh, you've got, you've got the bassy voice someone... for it. Alan is Talos <laughs> principal. <laughs> the Talos <laughs> principal. <laughs> That's exactly Alan, the Alan, game. Got the perfect voice for it. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, I've got a question for you. What's the cat about? I just like yeah. cats. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I've been to make a YouTube thing out of it. <laughs> In Alan, um, we trust. <laughs> Cat videos were invented by God. <laughs> is what we is what we've it's, decided. It's, 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 it's the pinnacle of mankind. It's what we've been building up to. It's the whole it's evolutionary <laughs> process. You said that we could create the internet and then film cats and then put the films of cats on the internet. <laughs> he tried. He tried like thousands of years ago with the Egyptians, but then that failed. Well, they didn't <laughs> so then he's had to do it again. They did, yeah. they did love the shit out of their cats, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, you're brilliant. you're guided by Alan and also uh, <laughs> uh, one of the computer terminal. Well, the computer terminal says so like a an AI. Yeah, like like some kind of semi conscious AI, possibly, mm. maybe not. It's all a bit of a weird, confusing yeah. mess. And it's, they're both hmm. basically the saying, is, I'm, I'm telling I'm hesi- you the truth. I'm hesitant to get too stuck into my theorizing and, well, what, what is my theorizing and how much I know? Because it's, it's the, it's the story of the game. It's like the core of mm. what it's all about. Like discovering yeah. what's going on is like a, a serious draw for it. I think, I think they've done something quite clever because I think that most people that are interested in playing a, a puzzle game that is kind of filled with those physical puzzles will also be interested in like, the the puzzle of the narrative as well and it seems as if it's going to be well constructed (laughs) enough to feel like that there's a proper conclusion coming out of it like i mean it isn't just yeah these scattered pieces of bits of information hopefully it'll all draw together into one kind of finite point i haven't seen the the ending but 
I I don't want to because I don't want to ever be let down. So <laughs> just in case. <laughs> But. I'm. I've. I've got it now. I just haven't played it yet. I'm really looking forward to checking it out. Though. Oh, it's good. It's good. Oh, I'll be interested to hear what you think about it as well, then, Dan. Hmm. You can try but, and um, leave each other notes. But <laughs> what else have people been playing then? Who wants to go next? Liz, what you, things you've been asking me about the Talos Principle? What have you been yes. playing? Well, I've been complain, complaining, complaining, <laughs> playing a combination <laughs> of <laughs> of uh, Odd World, New and Tasty, and Shell Knight. Both have a similar feature of causing rage and assault, <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me happy. And oh, I haven't, that, that, I haven't that experienced kind of joyful that. rage that only video games yeah. can give. I haven't experienced it in quite some time. Um, that elation of finally making that one fucking jump that just you just keeps falling over and falling down the hole, and you can't do it, and then and then suddenly you do it, and you're like. <laughs> That I'm a god. I am a god. So, <laughs> 18, 18 lives later, I am a yeah. god. <laughs> you can ignore the past 15 minutes because I made that jump this time and that's all that counts. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, I, I'm getting more into sort of, I, I play mostly indie games. I very rarely play AAA titles. Um, recently um so you're too hipster for that whole, right there's a whole influx of sort of retro style games coming out that are increasingly difficult and are reminiscent of the much harder old school games that you got um mm. i'm i'm really enjoying i'm enjoying the challenge um mm -hmm. and the stories but, um, aren't, aren't so, that bad either so like um, the story so really like good. shovel knight has go i mean what what was it supposed to look like what what kind of it's like it, no it's kind of like shovel knight's definitely got like a distinct kind of mega man meets yeah. a kind of more little bit it more reminds... like rpg kind yeah, of yeah, yeah but, it's they, got an RPG but they really wanted to restrict themselves in like the the graphics and um to make to make them look as much like a and this yeah. game as possible right the, the most important yeah. thing mm. about shovel knight is its soundtrack is fucking it's so rago good. From it's start amazing. to finish, <laughs> yeah. it was just on one. <laughs> Chip what's, tune what's fantastic on as one. well is, yeah, a lot of the sound sprites and the the music in it. Um, it, it feels so familiar. It feels like I've heard it before, and I instantly know the tune, even though yeah. it's brand new. <laughs> But I think yeah, it's except, yeah, because except there's also an interesting. There's like more depth to the chip tune than you would have got off of a you know NES cartridge. Yeah, so the yeah. songs are more thing, complicated. Which is the thing that I was going to say. So they've made this platformer where they've tried to kind of restrict themselves to that the, NES the graphical aesthetic. capability, but they they mm -hmm. haven't like limited themselves as musically to. Now there's definitely no. more. they have limited themselves in memory. So yeah. they've got they've got more mm. layers to the music. They've got more things on screen at the same time. Yeah, because it sounds like yeah. how maybe you remember the songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like yeah. when you hear yeah. when you hear a it's... Mega Man tune, you're kind of like, oh, I remember there being more, more of it. Yeah, yeah. but like, yeah. but like well, obviously that yeah, there never was. But with Shovel Knight, there definitely is, they and I think that was a so very well. like deliberate decision on their behalf mm -hmm. to do it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I swear, I swear blind that there is one particular sound in the beginning um, of the game that gets played and it is the the sound it makes when you throw a rock in Pokemon you do rock smash and I'm certain it's exactly <laughs> the same but it probably isn't <laughs> um, but it's just it's really good um, also reminds me a little bit of a New Zealand story as well New yeah Zealand I can story? see that yeah, yeah, yeah. You in play the difficulty a little... You, yeah, you're you a little bird a bird that flies uh, about the gaff platformer oh, okay. you're a kiwi <laughs> I can't remember your name yeah. Hey, he said you don't, wait, what? Kiwi you don't that flies? Not... This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you don't really birds. fly. You, you, you can kind of... jump and sort of float. <laughs> yeah, flappy about kind of a little bit. Um, but like, I mean, you you don't, you, you're like yellow in New Zealand story and Kiwis aren't yellow. And, uh, no. so it's, not a, it's not an act. <laughs> not a realistic game. He's wearing realistic, trainers but, as well. But, but, like, Kiwis but aren't seen, famous for wearing trainers. But you've seen Taz, right? You've seen Taz. Yeah. Yeah. And like the Kiwis and Taz are definitely yellow. That's true. <laughs> so you know they've got precedent for that. They haven't oh, got precedent okay. for the flying because that that fabulous documentary <laughs> Taz in Tasmania showed yeah. us the kiwis in fact are oh, yellow. I'm, it's it's a completely <laughs> accurate portrayal of what Tasmania is like. That is that is literally okay. it. Is that just New Zealand story? <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. Like. So. 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 Give us more of what what Shovel Knight's about then. Like. What. Well, what kind of. 
What, what's There's the a, charm apart from it being difficult? Tell them the story, because I quite like this I'll story. I'll tell you the story. So you're Shovel Knight, and you have your friend Shield Knight, who is a lovely lady who can take care of herself, except that she randomly gets captured. And, you know, Shovel Knight's really sad about that, so he abandons his quest for whatever. Quest for glory. Um, <laughs> Shoveling shit. And, and, you know, it starts shoveling, becomes a bit, you know, become, you know, does some farming. And then... I can't remember her name, but she's like an enchantress of doom. Um, gets more power, and then the land's taken over by baddies, and then Shovel Knight's like, I'm not going to take this shit. I'm going to win. And then you start your journey. <laughs> um, and so you have to, the, the bosses are so hard. The combat is insanely difficult. You basically have your shovel, and you hit people over the head with it, or you hit yeah. bounce on them. <laughs> And you Iconic upgrade. strategy. Who would suspect? Yeah. To be honest, <laughs> though, doing the, to hit them over the yeah. head with it. <laughs> he's got really cool moves. Like he's got this, like really pogo gnarly, jump. yeah, like Ducktales pogo jump. Thing yeah, it's the most sick. effective thing I've ever found in the game, though, against every enemy. Like you, it wins most of my battles. Is just. <laughs> po- you're just pogoing the shit out of everyone just like I'm yeah. <laughs> take it bitch <laughs> take it um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun um, okay. and yeah there's the RPG element so you have your little um, your town your village that you eventually get to um, and you can upgrade your life your, your well upgrade your health upgrade your mana supply and buy trinkets that basically can aid in specific parts of the map that you can't otherwise get to also, a um, really good touch is as you get new armor, he like changes mm-hmm. his appearance. Yeah, and like oh, you just yeah, like by the end, by the end, like, right you, like, you, like shovel knight looks balling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have a weird spiked armor. Yeah, yeah, or is he just covered in shovels? No, it's not covered in shovels. Does he have? Shovels, does he though. have like a little different trowel. levels of bling? Does he have like a secondary <laughs> oh, attack? Because it's like a little trowel. He like just chings out every now and then. No, that'd be, that'd be nice. Nice. He doesn't have that. He should have the trowel. That's for the sequel. The inevitable sequel. <laughs> oh, it's like keeps it in his boot. It's like shovel knight kids. <laughs> kids oh, oh, tra- oh, no, <laughs> oh, it'll be it'll be like it'll be trowel squire. <laughs> trowel squire. <laughs> that sounds like a really good way that we could make a quick video game that makes a buck off the fact that we're like you know just making someone else's. Yeah, trowel like little, little <laughs> sounds like a plan. <laughs> trowel squire beating up his little kids in his little playground. Okay. <laughs> or oh, you do a mini that? game of like garden growing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, so that's Shovel Knight. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic and said, game. And you said I you've been playing. It. You said you've been playing Old World New and Tasty as well. Oh yes, which... I love it. It's exactly everything I was hoping it would be, and mm-hmm. more. And more, yeah. <laughs> and more. I'm enjoying it so much. Like it's. <sighs> I, I can't. It's been a while since I played the original, so I don't remember remember if all of the puzzles and maps and everything is exactly the same. But I don't care because it's it still feels exactly. It, it gives me the same exact feeling as I did when I played it originally. Hmm. And it's, the maps, it's amazing. The, the maps are pretty similar, but there's been some really they interesting are. like perspective changes that make it feel yes. completely different. Like completely, yeah. completely different. Like I'm currently in the jungle. Um, and I am, I've just finished the, uh, power, the, 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 I think it's like five or six, um, areas you have to go to, to light up the things in Param, um, Oh, in Param- the Paramite, yeah. the Paramite, like, temple. Yeah, the Paramite area. And yeah. I'm literally I've, about, I've just gotten into the main Paramite temple. I'm going to solve that. And then I'm going to deal with Scarabinia, whatever it's called. Scrabby. Yeah. I'm, I'm still on the first <laughs> level, but I do absolutely love it. Um, it's, oh, it's so good! I, I never, I never played the first one. I, I only ever played Exodus, um, Able uh, Exodus, Rob Names, which is excellent. So it's really yeah. nice to have the kind of new flavor of the the prequel to the game that I actually played. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it just feels like Oddworld through and through, and nothing else ever does. So having mm. a bit more of that on my PlayStation Four is really, really nice. Um, Did you but, get it for yeah. free? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I waited till they, till they put it on PlayStation Plus, which was nice. Um, um but, yeah, get it now, actually. It's now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, grab yeah, that yeah. shit. Mm. Yeah. Anyone, yeah. anyone that hasn't got, got, got a PS4, get that now, because it is excellent. It's got, it's got a specific kind of charm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. worth playing. Such a interesting, oh, you gotta love rubbish anti-hero. Yeah, I mean, like, don't, <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, the only warning that I give is it, it, it feels a little bit archaic in how it controls because they haven't changed that. Yeah, they haven't. They haven't yeah. sorted yeah. out. The, they haven't like, sorted out the platforming so that it feels. Huh, except it does kind of. It it does. It's always reliable. It always does exactly the same thing. So once you get used yeah. to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Works, you have to get used to it. Works. Though it's a different way of approaching mm. jumping in a video game and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, currently you don't, the you don't have PC momentum. one. Yeah, the um. Uh, I, I think I'm sure it's been fixed, but I'm not sure if it's been fixed for me. Um, a lot of people are having trouble with the um, the dead zone of con where people are playing with controllers um, because oh, Abe, was okay. ju Abe jumps when he's not supposed to, uh, walks forward into mines, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my controller is fairly old, so I do have some drift, and that is pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit laughs> but it's still really good. I enjoy it still. Um, as you say, you get used to the mechanic. It is consistent, so you can. And do the yeah, those uh, the beautiful like animations they have for all of the weird creatures in it. The kind of oh, flavors of humor. Sick. Watching, I I can't mm. remember the name of the enemy, but like the the guards that have the guns. Uh, Slicks. Slicks. Yeah, watching watching them Slicks freak out when you, when you start <laughs> when you start um like um chanting near them just before yeah. you. Oh, they and then you can just run them off the side or run them into some other nasty <laughs> trap and then Abe just chuckles to himself afterwards it's, <laughs> ah. it's, it's, really, it's got it, it just feels like Playstation 1 in all of the best ways that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's it too much. <laughs> it's it's, it's such a fantastic game. I, I've been streaming it as well, and um, some of the people on the stream never played the original and had no idea about it. And to see them in the chat get really excited and enthralled in the game makes me really happy ah. as well. So, oh, that sounds so great. great. So you're it's streaming so it at the moment. Do you ever have to do, like, fart on demand by community? <laughs> Are they just like, come on, do a fart now? I, no, no, there were <laughs> some comments. They're like, why is, there, why, is, why, is, why is there a fart button? It's not useful. And then it became useful. And then they were like, oh, I love it. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Um, course, but yeah, the use of the know. parts actually, would it, I would didn't realise how wonderful it was. Um, would it not almost great. be better if there was no use for them ever? If oh, they gosh. just put that button on there so <laughs> yeah. you could do that? I don't know, but by the time you possession your own thoughts, there's no going back. <laughs> oh my god, that was in Exodus. I didn't think they yeah. did it in Odyssey. Yeah, no, yeah. No, they definitely, you definitely can at some point. That mechanic was, was fantastic. <laughs> Wasn't there a button in the like top down Grand Theft Autos that farted? I think it was in Grand Theft Auto 2. Yeah, yeah, there was. Like the top down ones, I think there yeah. was like a fart or burp button. It's the, it's the horn for the car. <laughs> button. So when you're yeah. not in a car, yeah. So you yeah. mean you can't, you yeah, can't right, fart yeah. in your car? <laughs> well, that's a crying shame. No, you can't fart in your car. That's a crying shame. You can't, <laughs> you can't touch other nice shit. Okay, but hold on a second anyway. Dan, oh, right? That. Since oh, you started that. talking. What, what <laughs> games? Well, you've been playing a million and one games, right? So, have you got yeah. any particular choices that you would like to talk about on our episode this week? Um, okay, I think Catherine is the one I'd want to bring yeah. up. So yeah. I went back, and I'm trying to I'm trying to dig into my back catalogue. So I went back to play Catherine because I've heard good things about it, and I enjoyed Persona Four so much at the beginning of the uh, you know at last year that I thought it was worth checking out. So Catherine is made by the Persona team, but it's dealing with sort of an adult sort of man child re sort of relationship <laughs> issues and it uh it's a guy who uh is in like a long-term relationship and the question of marriage comes up and he's unsure how he feels about this and then he accidentally <laughs> in a drunken in a drunken mess cheats on his girlfriend with this with this young <laughs> blonde girl at the bar accidentally um with the same. Well, he, <laughs> I tripped and I fell out of my clothes. I no, made no. a lot of really so small he, um, mistakes that led to the big one. So, he's, uh, he, so he gets extremely drunk and then he wakes up and he's next to this girl. So that's how it starts off. And then it's how he deals with the situation. He starts having these nightmares where he has to like climb, essentially. She and it's this sort of puzzle platform. It's this puzzle platform, essentially. Like he is... He's got these little sheep horns and there's other sheep in this nightmare and he has to try and climb up to get out. And it's essentially it just it tries to tackle these sort of insecurities of, you know, that can arise in like a adults in like long term relationships and these relationship problems and stuff. And it does it in quite a sort of um, it starts off doing it. It sets it up quite black and white, like this person has these attributes, this person has these attributes. But then it, it all starts to sort of uh blur together and like I really think like the Persona team like especially after playing Persona 4 and now this like 
they have a way of sort of getting their hooks into like real personal issues like no one else i think like they do something where they can really like express these sort of unique personal uh emotions and stuff that i don't think other people really have managed to do yeah. like and i think it's really impressive like and i think it's definitely worth buying the puzzling is a bit annoying and it can be quite difficult but yeah it was never so it was it, never too difficult for me yeah when he's asleep you have the puzzle but is during the wake isn't that more sort of like a dating sim you get to respond to sort of you, yeah yeah so there's like you talk to your friends at the pub yeah. and then you talk to the other people at the pub and uh, then you have some like chats with your girlfriend or with the the other girl they both call Catherine in this case that's why it's called Catherine yeah. um and then that's nice and easy for it, him it tells it's, <laughs> it sort of it sort of tells you later on like um that your choices and your answers to like certain questions like in the in the nightmare like after you finished a level you get put into this sort of nightmare confession booth and you get asked a question and it's sort of like which one of these do you agree more with is marriage the start of life or is marriage the end of life? Ugh. Like things like that. And like, it's got a few questions like this and it's just, they're really, they're really sort of polar opposite answers. But then apparently the, the way you answer those questions and the way you answer other questions sort of influence how your character reacts to certain situations, like whether or not he starts to disregard his current girlfriend or whether or not he's sort of adamantly against the, the girl he's cheating with, like whether or not he's like sort of, he's committed to, his kind, his proper girl. Yeah, sounds you... like a bit of a prick. This dude. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you... I think I think it's it's really difficult not to go into it more. Yeah, like, and I think it's really it's really worth playing. Like, I want to play it. It's something, and it, it, it'll make it makes everything makes more sense because I didn't know exactly how what to think of it before I was playing it. But, but then, like, once you start playing it, like, it really comes together. Some kind of understanding of the subtlety, like some real yeah. understanding of the subtlety of like the ways that a person could be drawn in. A given relationship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. And like, mm -hmm. and there's other people like who you talk to and they've all got their own problems and stuff. Like that's part of the, part of the game as well. It's like talking to other people and like learning their problems. It's like and real things life. And... God. Yeah, it is. And it does it, it does it really, Man, really real well. Real life is hard <laughs> enough already. I don't want to have to um, have that be a part of my escapism too. That's a complete lie, by the way. I that's definitely why you want play it to Sims, be a part so of my escapism. Put, yeah. You play Sims, you can put yourself yeah, in a pool and take away the ladder. <laughs> Baby wall damage. There's um, there's no consequences on this one though. So <laughs> I was going to ask: Is um, real. when you make your decisions with the, the questions at the end, and you say that influences mm -hmm. how he behaves, are you aware of Apparently. that influence? Or oh, no, I was going to say, yeah, you're not aware because, of that. Yeah, because if you are able to make a conscious decision of I want to move away from Catherine A. Or yeah, whatever you you, you um, can't do I mean, that, can you? If you, if you don't know, the, yeah, yeah. So there are like there are different points. Like you get texts and stuff, and you can choose how and whether or not to reply to them. Oh, and things like that. So that 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 influences his attitude as well, and then uh. it sort of changes what. Like there's there's things he says that you don't get a choice over. Yeah, but those things that he says, apparent like it it says they are suggest they are from your dream. Uh, sort of extrapolated from the way you've been behaving. Uh -huh. It's a bit I like have to say though, with this, <laughs> I didn't really like it. I've I didn't play a lot of it, but like I, I pretty much I think I got to like the second dream sequence of this puzzles. I didn't like the puzzles at all, to be honest. But like that's, that's like what I mean. I remember when the game came out and seeing some of the reviews that are around for it, people. People seem to get quite annoyed at like the dream sequency stuff. Yeah, um, I've had them very very that, hard. That the mechanics are kind of inconsistent even yeah they're, oh, really? i mean they're pretty inconsistent it's it is tough but also, but also at the same time also like that doesn't really seem slight, like it's, the, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a slight mistake and then you feel like you get put i don't know at a point where it's like a slight mistake beginning. really near the end and they get put right back to the beginning it's like i've i can't be bothered now it but gets to that point because like, like, why... it was a playstation plus thing it was like i didn't I don't want to put more investment into something that I feel like I've just wasted this amount of time doing something and not. But that's not why the all. game's interesting or why people think that it's good anyway. Yeah, like which is, is, do. is so almost it's, it's a shame that there's, that there's yeah, like the more interesting elements of the game are behind this barrier of a kind of yeah. not very good puzzle game. Which I kind of disagree though, because once you get more into it, like the mechanics become very clear, and like they become a lot deeper and a lot more interesting. Like at the beginning, like it's hard to understand exactly what you're doing, but then you get taught techniques 
like as you go along like it's like shows you like a little teaching video and you're like shit why didn't i think of that that makes everything so much easier and then it gives you another challenge that you have to try and overcome and it it definitely starts off as like a big barrier but like it gives you enough retries like and you can just keep retrying and um it it does feel a bit weird to start off with but it does have its context within the story and within the world um if it's still is kind of like that first initial hurdle, then that's it's the similar thing where they were talking about like Dragon Age, where it's like you've got to play this much of it being boring for it to get fun, and if that the bit main intro part of the game isn't fun, why would you want to continue? It's like you've got to almost force yourself to get over that hump and get yeah, past but that like, first I mean, barrier. But to you get got to the you got to commit to games, man. You got to commit to games, man. Like if there's something interesting that's going on there, you've got to like just get stuck in and, and make it to and make it to that part also like not, don't, don't not be put off in got, the first couple of hours not when you've also got, it has an easy uh, mode you know like uh, probably about 100 games in your back catalogue and you're just trying to get <laughs> through them and it's like if it doesn't grab me in the first hour I'm probably mm. not going to play it the thing with Catherine though is it's it's not that long a game like 12 hours I think max like around 12 hours I think it took me to play it and it is split up in days like so you've got these little segments that you can play and it's sort of you know you're your puzzles and stuff. Um, I mean, I really, I really enjoyed it. Like, I, I was worried that I wouldn't like the mechan- the the puzzles, and I started on normal, uh, just to see how I'd get on with the uh, with the idea that if I really struggled, I'd tone it down to to easy. But I never had to. Cool. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, I'm interested to try it. Like, seeing as it's turned up on PlayStation Plus, like having me now now that i can basically have the opportunity to play it for free it's, it's definitely given a go also, but, um, also i don't I, just a quick one it has amazing ui design like <laughs> like persona team persona team like i don't know if you saw the persona 5 trailer like that shows it as well but the persona team are, are really stylish in the way that they design their their games <laughs> yeah i'm well i haven't seen but i do like a ui design because i am that kind of a nerd but hey, um, <laughs> anyway, let's, let's, let's keep going around this, this round table. Um, Joe, what have you been playing? I played 1886. Oh, uh, we had a good chat about 1886. Um, I'll be interested uh, to hear what your opinion is as well. Right. So, like, um, so I, I guess where I start with 1886, 1886 for me, I guess you guys have gone over the fundamentals of it, right? In the previous episode. We went pretty deep. Yeah. We had a pretty good conversation about it. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I, I enjoyed myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. like it's quite hard to recommend at fifty quid. Yeah. Like, but but I shot a werewolf with a Tesla rifle. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. I like sieged the airship. That was pretty fucking ninja. Like the airship is like awesome. it has a, a, it's got loads of really 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 good ideas. Just when it was about to get really good. It, it finished, which wasn't <laughs> ideal, and it was like, "Oh, mm. there'll be another one." Maybe not yeah, now, though. But like, a- I, 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 I found it to be like really entertaining. I actually thought the shooting mechanics were really solid. I had a good time. Um, I would it play like a sequel. You have the same- I would definitely play a sequel if they if they pulled one out. I'd like hope it'd be a little bit more in in depth and a little bit more fleshed out. Mm. Uh, but I think it'd have I to would be. definitely play a sequel. Like for sure. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like it sounds like you me and you have a very similar opinion yeah. on it. And I think Alan, you were in the same camp, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. Like I really? I enjoyed yeah. my experience with it. Yeah, it was just too short and I, there wasn't There's- there wasn't enough. I don't know. Almost there wasn't enough to what was there. There was a lot of sitting back mm. and watching it. But if you know you're getting into that kind of experience, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, for me mm. personally, like, what, there are a few points I wanted to bring up about it. One, I feel like, due to how it was advertised, I knew exactly what I was getting into because I've heard a lot of mm. people moaning about like quick time events and like stuff like that. But that game was like, here is a video game that is a cover based shooter that's going to have a shit ton of quick time events in it. If you're down for that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Then come play the order. It didn't hide any of that. But it wasn't even feel. necessarily no. the fact that there were like loads of quick time events. Like there were quite long periods of times with just you know long cutscenes where yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. do anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. Entire I've... chapters of the game where you didn't yeah, do yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. It was just yeah, watching yeah, yeah. it. So that's there's that against the quick time events. I mean, I, I knew it was going to be. I was expecting a lot more quick time events than there actually were. To be honest. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, for me, I feel that like. 
those long cutscenes. I mean, like, right, we're like we're like Metal Gear fans, right? We can take we can take it. We can take yeah. a longer cutscene <laughs> than the order has to give it to you, right? But for me personally, I found the thing that surprised me the most was how good the voice acting was. I was like, wow, yeah, really strong. Yeah, everyone in this is on form. I'm really enjoying listening to these characters talk to each other because the voice acting is so good, and I really mm. like what they were doing. Now, I actually found the storyline, although a little contrived, to be entertaining. Yeah. And it really like yeah, pulled I, me I, through it. Like I wanted to know what was happening. I like I liked the characters. I thought they had interesting interrelationships with each other. I really liked that yeah. they didn't, even though there were tones of love interests, they really didn't overplay that at all. Yeah, like yeah. they let me kind of try and put that on them. In further, yeah, and I yeah. thought that that was really good of it. So I. I and think there's a lot strong that's with like, it. That's like a curious level of subtle storytelling yeah, that, really I that I didn't see was was ever going to be suggested by mm. that game. Yeah, no, it's so. really good like for that. Like, And the story is interesting. It like attempts to have a few things that are involved in kind of its, I guess it's mythology that I think are completely unnecessary. Like, I don't know why the Order have to be Arthurian guys like really like because it's I, cool yeah because <laughs> it's cool yeah and that, like there's a couple of because it's cool but when the order's not doing because it's cool is that his best i think personally mm. and there's some nice references in there i guess to arthurian legends and stuff like that like and some mm. uh some chapter titles that stick out in my mind because i'm quite a fan of arthurian legends um mm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like, to be honest, the, the lore of it was one of the things that interested me the most by it, like that I was into the mm. most, and I hope in the next one they explore more because yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I really yeah, enjoyed yeah. that element of it. But I, I, yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, I, it's shame. I think we said it, we said it last week, really, and or whenever we spoke about it before, and it is just it's you know, diff, it's it finished in a really abrupt way <laughs> yeah because it, I mean, it, it didn't it didn't explore itself it, enough as much as it deserved it doesn't even really wrap up i mean like i mean this is i mean it's not really a spoiler because it doesn't do it but it doesn't really wrap up its overarching villain and that is a real problem for it for me i'm recommending yeah, it yeah. to people as a whole experience it reminds me quite a lot of um you know metal that that uh ground zeroes <laughs> I feel mm. like it's like a, yeah. a, the the like opening chapter of something that might yeah, be where, good. Yeah, where's the Phantom Pain for the yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Order eighteen eighty six? Yeah, well, so that's, that's my opinions on that. <laughs> moving <laughs> yeah. moving <Yeah>. swiftly on. <laughs> I don't know. I suppose no, um, like we're we're left with uh, Alan's particular pick of the games that he's played over the last little while. Yeah, so interesting for us. Yeah, I mean, I I just finished um, Resident Evil Revelations two, so that, I mean that was an experience. Um, How was that? Yeah, after you told us about your little experience with the preview. Yeah, I I did. I really enjoyed it. It's it's kind of like a. It was kind of up and down in a way, though. It ended on a really bomb note for me. Hmm. It was like a you know, it kind of it was weird. It was kind of getting better and better, and it was felt like a really old school. I felt at times really old school Resident Evil, but then it got to a point um, where it's just I, kind of like I just kind of a rush. you for a second there, Alan. Yep. Um, Liz, you said you had to go about now, didn't you? I do, but I'm I'm too polite. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, you can escape. It's okay. It's okay. Is that cool? But yeah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the rest just, of the podcast. You, uh, right. I'll say goodbye, and you yep. can add it when you do the goodbyes at the end. <laughs> no, no, it's going in right now. Okay. <laughs> bye. Right. Bye. I, bye. 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 <laughs> Cool. Yes. Do you continue, Alan? But yeah. So I mean, the obviously, like I think I said a part before, like the the bulk of the game, or not the bulk of the game, the whole game is divided into kind of two ongoing two storylines. One where you play as both Claire Redfield and Moira Burton, and the other one where you play as Barry Burton and a weird little girl called Natalia. And these storylines are kind of going on. Do you play each episode is one Claire part, one Barry part? And mm-hmm. they're also uh, between them. There's like a six month time gap, but in the same location. So you're kind okay. of seeing the yeah, like seeing the, the previous events, and then maybe getting a bit more of a you know story revelation from Barry's okay. side and from Claire's side as so the story goes on. Similar to like what they did with Resident Evil Code Veronica, yeah, where you're like Chris, uh, Chris and um, Claire, but. Claire's in a place, Claire leaves the place, 
Chris turns up at the place, explores the place kind of in the aftermath of what's happened with Claire. Yeah. As soon as that purchased in with this one, it was, it's obviously kind of the storylines are going on at the same time. So you see like a bit of them exploring it as Claire and then a bit of it exploring it as Barry. It's not even necessarily, it's always the same part locations. Like they'll cross, Mm. it will cross paths, but they'll each have in like their unique parts that they have as well. How's, Um, how's, how's playing as uh, Barry Benton? (laughs) You've got to love him. Yeah, he's he's definitely you know all guns out. Does he have his massive gun <laughs> from yeah. you know his classic ca- like hand yeah. cannon? Has he got that? Yeah, he's he's st- the thing. The thing is the difference between two things. Claire and Moira start off with nothing at all. Every element like they find a knife, then they find a torch, then like find their first gun after a little while. Barry just turns up with a machine gun, a handgun, and his magnum. <laughs> like, like, Barry, Bert- <laughs> Barry Burton don't go buy milk without a fucking <laughs> sawn off under his fucking coat, though, does he? Like? <laughs> but yeah, it's just like it just kind of it did almost make it divided that like the Barry parts were definitely more action orientated and the bits as with well Claire were, the bits with Claire were like you just about have enough ammo and supplies to be able to get through any situation with the so enemies you're fighting so it's kind of trying to give you the two sides to the Resident Evil coin right yeah yeah it's isn't this what they've been trying to do for ages, though? And everybody always says that they just prefer the survival horror bit. But I think, I mean, like, Alan, Alan, how has it come out? Like, do you prefer the Claire bits? Or the... I do prefer the Claire bits, but the Barry yeah. bits are still fun. Like, they're not so over the top action that it's stupid and silly yeah, and yeah, quite Call of Duty. The rest of that, yeah, yeah. Like, um, in terms of it action, sounds, it's, prob- it's it probably it sounds like the same kind of dilemma that I had with um, playing of uh, the uh, DLC for Bioshock Infinite. Um, that we were mm. talking about last time. The fact that the action stuff was, yeah, kind of not as much fun as like stealthing around and having to make my ammo count. So yeah, but like, it's not that's... even necessarily saying that it's not as much fun. It's just kind of different. I mean, no, like, no, I don't mean in, in this specific it's... instance. I mean that that's that's uh, that's the general complaint. Um, like that kind of applies in Bioshock, mm. but it's weird in Bioshock because because it's only once tried to ever do the other thing and it was so much better when it did yeah yeah um i mean because i i i've always i've always preferred like the um resi 4 to resi 5 essentially and it's just and it seems like whenever i remember when they did the resi 5 dlc didn't they uh where you it was like in a mansion and you were getting chased Mm. and it just always seems like they people respond really well to that that but they they can't they can't let go to their, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can't let go to their sort of action like, thing that they've got hold of at the let's minute. Let's not forget though, like Resident Evil Four definitely is balls to the wall points. Yeah, you know? uh, and yeah, like, and, yeah, like, and, yeah. and, and when it does it, it's really good because I mean, it's not, it's just not as kind of Michael Bay about it. Mm. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, there, but yeah. like, there's like minecart, like rail shooty sections yeah. where guys are throwing sticks at dynamite at you and shit like that. Yeah, it's true, really yeah. intense. Um, but yeah, um, and there's like the whole bit where you're like assaulting a compound with men in riot gear and guns. Yeah, and stuff yeah. And so it's, it, <laughs> it it does get out of hand. Um, that's I I don't know. I, I feel Resident Evil just needs to like maybe just think about being less stupid about it. <laughs> mm. You know, it's like it's like it's like you know someone needs to be set like someone needs to be standing there with the mood like who just like plays a, a set piece that they're done who then goes no no this is this is stupid. And then they just rain it in a little bit, just a little bit, make it a little bit less stupid, and then they'll be fine. <laughs> but that's, I mean, with this, the that's bit. pretty much what they've done. Like, it's oh, really? not mm. over the top and stupid. It's just kind of like, yeah, because you have a machine gun and probably plenty of ammo for the most part, if you're not being stupid with it. It's about, mm. like, in terms of action, it's about as much as the higher level of action that you would get in 4. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But it's never, like, it's there's... You know, unless you're shooting an exploding barrel to try and defeat like a, a giant monster, there's not necessarily like shitloads of explosions yeah. going off and stuff. Yeah. You're not fighting soldiers; you're fighting things that are more like zombies. Yeah, and you're like not re- you're not repelling down the skyscrapers with no, like twin like Uzis that. and no. screaming. Yeah, yeah, no, I get yeah. that. No, that sounds how, good. Um, actually, sounds like something. Uh, how are the boss fights? Because I always thought like Resi was quite good. Oh, with hell boss yeah. fights. Some are really good. There's a few, even mm-hmm. like one of some of the early ones who are kind of doing a boss fight against an enemy that becomes like a reoccurring type 
is was okay, still really cool. good. But then there's other mm. elements where, like for example, unfortunately, the final boss fight is really like uninspired, really kind of boring, <laughs> and it's is it even the like at the very end after that boss fight, it just ended on a cliffhanger on the final uh, episode. It's oh shit. Like, oh. Oh. Because obviously they're doing like this episodic thing, so they're obviously going full hog into the idea of it's a TV show. You need so to that, see the that, finale this, cliffhanger. Oh fuck! Is this is it is it Revelation season one? <laughs> I guess this must be season two. Well, no, no but I mean, yeah, but they one, didn't do but, yeah. the, they didn't do that with Revelations mm. one, which I, I I mean, does anyone else played Revelations one? No. No. I enjoyed that game. I, I liked it. Like I thought, I thought mm. that that was a better Resident Evil than there had been in a while. I thought the bad guys were somewhat uninspired. It looked like it looks like Resident e- Re- like Revelations Two has kind of gone back to zombies. Yeah, I mean, there's like they've, they've turned kind of a, a cool thing. I think it's a pretty cool thing. The zombie Ed type enemies you're fighting the, with the Claire sections, they're like runners. But then when you're the enemies you're fighting in Barry's bit. They're, they are those runners, but they've obviously been dead for a while and they're rotten. So they're shamblers now. They're shamblers oh, now. Okay. Maybe oh, like okay. they have little bursts of speed. There are like a bunch of other, there are other like crazy yeah. mutated monsters yeah, yeah. that you well, fight Resident as well. Evil, right? Yeah, standard. <laughs> but that's an interesting way of doing it. Yeah, yeah that is, so that's quite clever like that. actually. That's and cleverer like, than hmm. Resident Evil usually is. Yeah, and <laughs> there's also cool things of like stuff that you do as. Uh, Claire, you can see affect the environment when you're Barry. Even something kind of mm. like there's a gate you have to open in one of the levels, or, and if you open it, there's nothing there for you. But then when you play as Barry, if that gate wasn't opened mm. by Claire, you can't get a certain gun. Oh, okay, huh. that's Stuff pretty like cool. That. So it's that that yeah, kind like of that. element. I you're like maybe there's a box somewhere that like if you move it for Barry then he can use it to get up somewhere else late and things like that. Oh, so. that's quite, that's quite like an old, yeah, that's, that's good, got yeah, a like kind that. of old school kind of aesthetic, that kind yeah. of like, oh, you didn't do it. Well, then you can't have it. And there's no <laughs> getting around that shit. Cause that was last episode. Chomp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like you can replay any of the chapters and you've got like all your equipment from previous times in the same way. As, like, oh, Resident okay. Evil 4, like that like, kind so of new you... game plus mode. Yeah. But yeah. just any of chapter section, you can just be. I'm just going to replay that mm. part again with my new loadout or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, although sometimes that can be a bit hindrance if you've ended a chapter with no ammo, <laughs> and then <laughs> you start another one. It's like, oh shit, I've got to fight this big horrible monster. But yeah, it's just it's it's just a shame that the last episode was definitely like the weakest of all of them. It felt rushed. It That's felt a real shame. Like yeah, just they like they just needed to end it and wrap it up and have it done. Because episode three was brilliant, and yeah, but it's like mm. it's just. I hope it's not going to be too long before the next season, you know, to actually mm. continue the story. Because I am interested to find out what happens, and I want to play more of it when they figure cool. out what they're doing. Yeah, Sounds it does good. sound good. I think I'll give that a go. All right, guys. Um, we've been going for a while. Should we call that a podcast? Podcast. <laughs> Podcast. Podcast done. Uh, <laughs> um, well, hopefully we'll catch you guys next time then, listeners. Um, and we do have an email address. I keep mentioning it now and sending us anything, but you never know. Taste my game face. I don't know what's in this element. What? Did they fucking know already? <laughs> no, no one's sending us anything that's worth reading out on air. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll be game You can people. also find Taste My Game Face on YouTube. And we have a Facebook page that you can like. Taste so my game face on and Facebook. And like a Twitter, because apparently a, that's the thing that people are supposed to about. be. Yeah. <laughs> We're on so, yeah. point. We're like cross media, probably not, Masters. probably not going to look at it, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, yeah, follow, follow, like, share, subscribe and all that bullshit. So if you have anything to send, send it to all of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then one we of should us, one, one, one of us will see it, yeah. But yeah. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Okay. That's that's the pimping ourselves out segment that was. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.